Welcome to this video series on orchestrating with Iconica Sketch. Now, Iconica Sketch is an orchestral library that's included with Cubase 13. And I want to show you how far you can take it with the sample library in building up some orchestrations. Now, talking about Iconica Sketch, Iconica Sketch is a slimmed down version of the full Iconica sample library that you can get. Now, that sample library has a lot more content, a lot of samples were captured, there's quite a broad spectrum of instruments and articulations where this slimmed down version has basically all you really need to create some great orchestrations. But before getting into InSpace, let me just close this down and just remove this track and show you how we can get to it. So I'm going to right click here and add an instrument track. For this, the instrument I wanna choose is Helion Sonic. So Helion Sonic is the player that allows you to open up the sample library. With your MIDI inputs, Select your MIDI keyboard controller that you're going to use to trigger the notes. The audio output is going to go out my stereo output and I can give this a name. So let's just call it Iconica for now. And I'll click add track. So that creates an instrument track for me. And on this, it has instantiated an instance of Helion Sonic. Now under the all section here, you can see all the libraries that you can access that are installed on your machine. Now over here, this is the Iconica sketch. So when I click on this, it's going to show me all the instruments that I can load into the player. Now, if you don't know about the Helion Sonic player, it's a multi timbral player, meaning I can load up to 16 different instruments. Now, the beauty of this, I will explain later in the video series, but basically you can build up a big selection of instruments that's contained within one instrument. Now this has its pros and cons, but I will get to that in this video series. So what I wanna show you in this video series is how you can take these instruments that are included in Iconica Sketch and build up a great signing orchestration. Now the idea behind Iconica Sketch is to be able to quickly write or sketch up orchestrations, but that doesn't mean that it's a very basic instrument. So let me show you the ins and outs of the user interface and then we'll dive in deeper and see what's possible. So let's load up an instrument. Over here, you can choose a name, you can sort the name alphabetically, you can also sort the rating and the category. So if you look at the categories, we've got chromatic percussion, we've got some keyboards, the strings section, the woodwinds, and then you've got some brass as well. How about loading up a violin? So over here, we've got violins one and violins two. So in the orchestra layout, you've got two different sections of violins, and it's great for playing different parts and building up a layered orchestration. So I'm gonna take violins one, and drag it over here to load it up into slot one. Now that loads up the samples and brings up the graphic user interface for this instrument over here. This little icon shows you what the instrument is. So I've got a violin. Over here are the different articulations that you have available to you. So I'm just gonna play a note and just click through these. So you've got staccato, pizzicato, spiccato, sustain, legato, tremolo, and then sustain vibrato. Now these notes over here are showing you the notes that I can hit to key switch these. So if I hit C0, it's going to jump to staccato, C sharp, pizzicato, D0, spiccato, sustain is D sharp zero, legato is E zero, Then I've got tremolo on F0. And then finally, sustain vibrato on F sharp zero. And as I move my mod wheel, you'll see that you've got the dynamics layer over here. So if I scroll all the way down here, this is our softest level. And then as I scroll up, you go through all the different dynamic layers all the way to Fittissimo. So if I just play the sustain vibrato over here. And if you look down here, I'm moving my mod wheel to ride up to different dynamic layers. Now over here, you can change the level of the instrument, change its attack and release if you wanna make those changes. Over here, you can click to the MIDI section where you can set the key range of that instrument. 
So for example, if I loaded up another instrument into this slot, I could choose a different range for the keys. Maybe with violins too, I don't want this full range. I can change it down over here with the highest and lowest notes. You can also transpose sections up so you can make some changes to how the MIDI reacts with the instrument over here. Then moving across over here, we've got the mix section. So I can set the mix level for the different instruments, change their panning. I can see a level here when I play back. And then I can also add some effects. So if I click over here, it'll send the level two effects slot one over here. So if I click here, here on my different effects, I can click this drop down menu and select an effect that I want to add there. And like you saw when I go back here, I can send it to that section. And I can also choose the outputs. So violins one is going to my main output, or I can go to multiple outputs here. And that comes in handy when you're building up a multi timbre meaning a large section of instruments within this player and set it to different outputs so that you can mix this within the Cubase Mix console. And in the multi section over here, you've got option to change the levels and the panning as well. And you can set some program changes over here to change those multi settings. But I'm not really going to get too deep into that. I think we can focus in on these other sections. And then over here, you can click on the options to change some of the options for the instruments. But for now, we're just going to leave everything set to the default values over here. Now, going back here to the edit section with the instrument, you can see I've added in some strings or violins, should we say. Now, let's go for another type of category. For example, let's take the trumpets and load this in over here. So what you see with the trumpets is that you have different articulations. So with the violins, you had staccato, pizzicato, spiccato. You don't really get these articulations within brass instruments. So the brass instruments, we've got staccato, macato, sustain, sustain vibrato, and legato. Now, maybe going for, let's say, a wind section instrument. So I'll go for the English horn, drag that over here. And as you can see, you've got similar things over here. But if I maybe go for something else like the percussion section, let's take a look at that. So I'm going for my timpanis. I'm going to drag these in over here. And as you can see, you've only got two different articulations. Now, this is changing from a hit to a roll. Now, don't worry too much about all of these. We are going to explore all of these throughout the video series. But I just want to show you how you can add different instruments here and how the graphic user interface changes depending on what instrument you've loaded up. Now, another thing to point out is if I just go back to the violins over here, I showed you that these are the articulations and that these are the key switch notes. Now, if you're looking at your keyboard down here, over here, you're seeing the key range of that instrument. And these yellow notes here are the key switching articulations. So you can either click them over here or switch them over here or by pressing the keys on your MIDI keyboard. So that is the basic rundown of the user interface for Helion Sonic by, via opening up the Iconica sketch. Now in the following videos, Let's see how we can start adding our instruments and look at differences of how you can build up different types of instrument tracks within Cubase to build up your orchestrations in different orchestra sections.